Well, happy Mother's Day. And, you know, ladies, as you came in and you wrote down your favorite type of flower, um, you know, your flower is going to be part of my message today. And by reading a few of these, I was not surprised to see paninis and, and uh, lilies and carnations, sunflowers, roses, you know, just the list goes on and on when you think of flowers. If you ever walked into a flower shop, it's just overwhelming. It can be. You walk in, there's just flowers everywhere, you know, different colors, different styles. Some, you know, you're thinking, is this really going to make it at my house? Is it going to last, you know, more than a day if I put it in a vase? Um, but I was not surprised that I didn't see the Strongolin Marka tries. Okay, I, pr I probably butchered that name. <laughs> However, it is commonly known as the jade vine flower. The jade vine plant is part uh, of the bean family. It is native only to the Philippines. The creeper plant grows wild along streams and ravines and the rare flower blooms in April or May. So here we are in May. It's in full bloom. If you want to take a trip over there and see it in person, you can. It's going to be hard to find though. This beautiful jade uh, vine has claw shaped petals that have exotic turquoise and blue hues. The flower grows on uh, tresses that are usually more than three feet long. Its flower spikes uh, have been designed by God to be pollinated not by bees or insects, although those can pollinate them, but bats. Bats are the primary pollinators of the jade vine. They are drawn in by a luminescent quality of the flower, kind of glow in the dark. The bats hang upside down, drink the nectar in the cup-shaped uh, jade vine flower, and at the same time, the flower deposits the pollen on the back of the bat's head, and then obviously it goes on to the next flower to pollinate it. Currently, the jade vine is an endangered species and its natural habitat is facing deforestation and poaching. I didn't know that there was poaching in flowers, but apparently there is on the black market. As a result, uh, they have become more and more difficult to find in the wild, maybe even close to extinction. The plant only grows wild in the Philippines in just a few botanical gardens around the world. Now, every spring, when you go to the local nursery, right, you get trays of flower, we do. We get trays of flowers for our flower beds because we want to be colorful in front of our house, right? So we prepare the ground, we sometimes add organic matter to it, and, uh, then we take those small clusters, and most of the time I ask my wife, because I really don't have a keen eye for the flowers, it's like, how do you want them arranged in the flower bed? Mm -hmm. Usually she lays them out for me, and then it's planting time. <laughs> this year, she says, I trust you. Uh -oh. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> so, one day I went out when it was nice and sunny, and I laid out the flowers and started planting them. Apparently I did a pretty good job, because she didn't have me dig them up and replant them again. So, um, but you know, by the midsummer, you get all the blooms and they're full and the, and the butterflies are flying around and of course the bumblebees. And there is nothing more uh, beautiful than flowers when they're in full bloom. Uh, but, you know, I don't have a professional uh, botanical eye, however, Nothing is more brilliant than when you're driving through the hills or driving out in the country and you see fields and meadows full of wildflowers down in the valley or up on a hillside or even in the wetlands, right? Today I want to honor every mom, stepmom, grandma, moms-to-be, and any woman of positive influence. And I'm sure you're thinking of women that have been in your life that have been a positive influence. I want to title today's message, Women and Wildflowers. Now as a kid, I grew up in the country picking flowers from my mom. Now I didn't go to great lengths. I went out in the yard and picked some dandelions and brought them in. Aww. Right, they were full of bugs and my mom would graciously accept them and then put them in either a jar or a vase or a cup, whatever it was. Um, most of the time they didn't survive very long. Mm -hmm. Even in the water they would kind of wilt. Uh, you know, they're not fresh picked flowers. 
uh, like you would get at a florist. But my mom was happy nonetheless. Now, as I got older, I was always looking for opportunities to give my mom flowers. I knew she loved flowers, and I thought, hmm. So one day, um, I was on a Saturday, my dad had a lawn care service, so he worked during the day, and on the weekends, he had a lawn care service, and he would go and mow some, some grass. And a lot of times, me and my mom would go with him. Uh, I earned a little pocket money at the same time. It was helping him out. So we go to this, uh, this one neighborhood, and we didn't mow one house, we mowed like five of them, large lawns, and uh, it took us a couple hours to do it. So as I'm mowing the grass, I keep smelling this, this aroma, this scent, and I was like, wow, this smells really good. And I keep going, and I keep back and forth with the mower, and I keep smelling it. And I'm looking around like, did I run over a flower bed or what, you know? And it wasn't. It was these big, giant white flowers that was just the whole side of the house smelled. And I was like, oh, my mom would love these. It was a southern magnolia tree. The blooms are huge. The blooms are white. And they are fra very fragrant. So I was like, my mom would love these. So I stopped the mower. I ran back to the truck, grabbed some pruning shears. I came running back. I clipped a few. Thank God they were short enough that I was able to reach them. I clipped a whole handful. I ran back to the truck. I put them up in the dash. And I was like, I need more. So I go running back to the tree. I clip some more and I come back and I was like, my mom's going to be surprised. And so I put the pruning shears up, went back to mowing. A couple hours later, uh, we all come back to the truck. We're loading up the equipment and my mom goes to get in the truck and she was surprised. Not only did the truck smell really good, but all the bees that were in it. <laughs> It attracted every bumblebee from five miles around. They were inside the truck. My mom was surprised. She was grateful that I thought about her, but I didn't think too much of it when I was a 12-year-old kid. Now, those sweet magnolia trees, every time I see them, and every time I see them in bloom, I always have to laugh, thinking, man, that could have been bad if my mom would have got stung. Uh, at the time, I was even allergic to bees. So, but I didn't think about it because when I was clipping them off the tree, I didn't see any bees. They were probably all following me, right? <laughs> but, you know, when you think of flowers, you think of times where maybe you, you do, you go up to a, a flower or something, you smell it, hoping that there's not a bee on it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you're younger and you fall in love, right? You fall in love and you're thinking, wow, you know, you get that, that, those butterflies in your stomach. Love struck. Now, I'm probably going to butcher this because I am not French. <laughs> but Elfa Lure, La Marguerite, right? It's better known as the demonstration of the flowers and the petals. The she loves me, she loves me not, Aww. she loves me. She loves me not. She loves me, right? You ever do that? Mm -hmm. Now, when I met my wife, good thing I didn't do it because I might have been getting scared by the time I got to the end. And if she didn't love me, what was I going to do? Right? Call her back and say, the flower can't tell a lie. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'd have been confused. I didn't do that with her. However, as a kid, uh, when you have a little crush on a girl in the neighborhood, you do that. A lot of times it didn't work out for me, however, right? But enough about me and my flower antics as a child, okay? I want to talk about what God wants to say to the women that are wildflowers. God has designed women to be like a wildflower. Wildflowers are very symbolic meaning, including happiness and joy and remembrance. Wildflowers are also a welcome sign of spring and summer. Many wildflowers represent strength and perseverance in the face of adversity. Forest fires can decimate a hillside, yet the first sign of life is what? Wildflowers. They pop back up out of nowhere. You'll see a whole hillside burnt, trees, everything. 
right? The grass is starting to grow back, but what do you see? Out of the ashes, you see this wildflower just pops up. Wildflowers, right, have adversity. Just like wildflowers, moms can adapt. Wildflowers can easily adapt to the different soils, weather conditions. They could serve energy when they face adverse conditions. Last year in the Badlands, among the rocks when we were out there, out in the middle of nowhere, there's this yellow flower that's just out there, like stuck to a rock. I was pretty impressed until I realized this thing was covered in thorns, right? I didn't want to smell it. I mean, I did at first until it seemed to thorns, and then I'm like, okay, that's a bad idea. And of course, you know, there was bugs and stuff crawling around it too. But, you know, when you think of these wildflowers, they're out there, sometimes they're thirsting for rain, they're reaching for heaven. You're thinking, how does that thing survive? It's like stuck in a rock. How is it? Well, moms do the same thing. They adapt to different needs of a child. They adapt to different needs of the stages of child. I mean, five-year-old Sally, she might be more independent than nine-year-old Billy, right? You ever have different kids and they all have a different need? With my mom, I was an only child, so it was just me, right? We, again, you know, she just had to adapt to me and deal with me. Sorry, mom, right? <laughs> But a toddler, infant stage, you know, there's all challenges. There's all kinds of things. And then when they get to the challenging teenage years, right, that can be very challenging. Or even adults, adulthood. Moms are always evaluating. They're always trying to figure things out. They always want what's best for us and best for the house. Anything that's under their care that a mom truly wants to have the best for her family. Moms, if you're in a dry place, keep reaching for that living water that refreshes you. Jesus will help you in the times where you feel like giving up. That poor little flower that's stuck in a rock somehow is surviving because God wants it to. Guess what? God wants you to survive, too. He's not going to leave you out there all by yourself and not take care of you. Just like wildflowers, moms are flexible. And I'm not talking about yoga. I'm talking about <laughs> flexible, right? Wildflowers are flexible in the wind. They seem to dance. And as they do, they get stronger. I notice when... If you plant a flower and it's young and it's tender, when, when that wind rocks it back and forth, guess what it is doing? It is actually strengthening it. When you feel like the wind is bobbing you up and down, when the wind is blowing up against you, guess what? Remain sturdy because it is strengthening you. Moms gain their strength by being flexible enough to bend without breaking. I'm going to say that again. Moms are flexible enough to bend without breaking. Because a lot of times, guess what happens? You feel like you're giving up. You feel like you're losing, but you're not. You're getting strength, and you just need to keep being flexible, and God won't get you through it. I know sometimes what you're thinking is, sometimes I feel like I'm bending and I'm going to snap, okay? Moms, how much more can I take of these kids? How much more can I take of this? Or how much more can I take of that? Trying to run a household, trying to make sure everybody's happy. I couldn't imagine, you know, years ago, a lot of the families, they had 10, 12 kids. Can you imagine? Poor mom then. Going crazy, right? However, moms are flexible enough to handle it. God has given you strength to handle the gentle breezes and the gale force winds. I'm going to let you know, and this isn't even in my notes, this is a bonus, right? When you're going through storms, when you're going, you're, you're getting strength for the next season of your life. You're not going to be in a storm forever. I mean, look at the disciples when they were in the boat with Jesus. They're freaking out. Oh no, we're going to die. The storm doesn't last forever. God's going to get you through the storm for your next season. 
God was taking them through that storm so they could reach a demon-possessed man so they could heal him. God will get you through your through that storm for the next season of your life. Amen. When you're when you're flexible, you're gonna help your kids. You're gonna dance like nobody's watching. If you watch a flower in the wind, it's always moving, always dancing. You know, sometimes you have to bend with your child when they're stretching their wings. You want to give them a little freedom. You want to give them an opportunity to bounce back. But also, you don't want to discount biblical principles that you're instilling into your kids. A huge debate is, you know, over the over the years as you know outfits of teenage daughters now i don't have a teenage daughter but i can just imagine if you had one if i had one my conversations would be like you're not going out of the house dressed like that <laughs> number one when you're shopping you're not going to be buying that outfit in the first place mm -hmm. amen, amen <laughs> moms of virtue are flexible but sturdy at the same time teaching your daughters how to dress classy and not trashy Right? A virtuous woman, a virtuous mom is going to instill that in their kids. You're not going to have that conversation because you're not going to even buy those clothes for them. How are these teenage girls getting these clothes in the first place? It's your money that's buying the clothes. Just saying. Moms, you need to remember that you're not always going to be the coolest mom on the block. All right? Uh, sometimes you're going to have to say no to your kids, whether it's attending that party, whether it's staying out late past the curfew, or sometimes they just want their way, and sometimes you're going to have to say no. Mm -hmm. Saying no as a mom is, is not the end of the world. Saying no can be a good thing. God called you to be their parent first, not their friend. You can be flexible, but it also you can show tough love. Mm -hmm. Teaching your children the things of God is not a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 4, 9 through 10 says, Only be careful and watch yourselves closely, so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen and let them fade from your heart as long as you've lived. Teach them to your children and to your children after them. Remember the day you stood before the Lord, your God, at Arab, uh, when he said to me, Assemble the people before me and hear my words, so that they may learn to revere me as long as they live in the land and may teach them to their children. Moms, you got a big responsibility, teaching and instilling godly principles in your kids. It's not a waste of time. It's not in vain. Just like wildflowers, number three, moms are rooted. I'm not talking about the roots in your hair, okay? <laughs> Another characteristic of the wildflower is it helps the soil stay healthy. It helps with erosion. Rooted. The world is full of erosion. We look at society and it's always trying to erode biblical values from our children. But a godly mom is rooted in his word. A godly mom will instill the values that God wants to impart into our family. There's going to be times where it's dry. There's going to be times where there's floods. There's going to be times when there's storms. Having good roots protects not only you, but it's going to protect the young flowers around you. It gives their roots something to hold on to in a world that's trying to uproot them. The devil wants to take your children and give them premature death. The devil is not out for your kids. The world is not out for your kids. Your responsibility is to be a mom first and you need to protect your kids. When you do that and you're rooted in God's word, you're protecting them. Amen? Amen. 
God has called you to protect them. We thank God for godly women that say no to the world, that have done, dug deep into the ground in God's word. Because when they do that, the others around them will flourish. Colossians 2, verse 6 through 8. It says, So then, just as you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith that you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow or deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and element, uh, elemental spiritual forces of his of this world rather than in Christ. Make sure that you're rooted in the word. Sometimes as a parent, you're like, I don't know where to turn to. We turn to this person or that person. We look at society and we're like, I don't know what to do. It's all in here. You gotta read it. You might not understand it all. That's where you gotta say, Lord, help me with these kids. Lord, help me to understand what to do, what to say, how to love. Nothing is more challenging than raising kids, whether they're a toddler and you're telling them no and they're throwing a temper tantrum, or they're an adult and they're not throwing toys, but they're throwing a temper tantrum, right? You have to make sure that you are being stern, but also in a loving way. Like wildflowers, moms help others. Wildfire, wildflowers uh, provide food in the form of leaves, nectar, and pollen for the insects. This process continues as they pollinate the wildflowers, which end up in new seeds. In other words, these plants contribute to the, and protect the cycle of life. Moms, when you feel like the insects are sucking the life out of you, right? You feel like everybody's pulling on your petals and eventually there's not going to be nothing left, right? Turn to Jesus. Every time, turn to Jesus. You were designed to handle these times. And I don't know about you, but, you know, if you look at how many petals are on here and everybody's just pulling on you and pulling on you and pulling on you and pulling on you, and you're down to your last petal. You're like, Lord, help me. Right? If you ever take a look at just this one petal left, one petal, it still has beauty. It still has beauty. There is beauty in that one thing. So when you're frazzled and you feel like everybody has pulled on you and everybody has sucked the life out of you, you know what? Say, thank you, Jesus, for these kids. Thank you, Jesus, that you've given me the responsibility to love on these kids, to, to raise them up as they should go. Proverbs 31, 26 through uh, 29 says, She speaks with wisdom and faith, faithful instructions is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praised her. And many women do noble things, but you surpass all of them. Proverbs 31, woman is recited all the time. And let me tell you, the value of that wife is also the value of a mom. It changes things. When moms go into the word, when moms of virtue look and say, you know what? I am blessed that I've got these kids. I am blessed I got the responsibilities. And if you're a spiritual mom and you're pouring into young ladies, that is a huge responsibility. Teaching them how to be a woman, how to be a wife, how to be a mom. Acts 9 through 36, or Acts 9, verse 36, it says, There is a woman of God that blessed those in her outside of her household, making a difference in the lives of others. It says, In Joppa, 
Let me say Joppa. There was a disciple named Tabitha. Her Greek name was Dorcas. And she's always doing good and helping the poor. When she passed away prematurely, everybody's freaking out because she was the one that was helping. She helped the neighbors. She helped the people. She helped the disciples. She was doing stuff outside of her house. She took care of her household and she did more. Women are virtue, women of God. They're doing not just their household, they're, they're going into their workplace and they are doing godly things outside of their four walls. Amen? Amen. Like wildflowers, moms display beauty. Moms display beauty. Not every wildflower is the same, but each displays its own beauty. The details of the Creator gives each one that is on display by themselves or with others. Don't discount or compare yourself, your beauty, to others. I've never walked by a wildflower or any flower and it's crying out, man, I wish I was as good looking as a rose, right? I've never heard a wildflower in the field saying, man, I wish I looked at like those flowers on the other hill. I've never heard a wildflower complaining that they were not beautiful. Moms, you were designed to display your beauty on the inside and out by raising those kids, by keeping your household in order, by being a provider, by walking your calling out and to be a godly influence by being a constant in their lives. Sometimes that's all your kids need is to be a constant in their life. Because the world is pulling them this way and that way. But as a mom, it's a beautiful thing when you're there just for them. You might not even have to say a word to them, but your presence speaks volumes. You might not have to say a word to them, but maybe your hug embraces them and gives them comfort in that time of need. God has put you on assignment. He has trusted you with those little ones, and sometimes even as they grow up, you're thinking, well, how can I be an influence on a child that's now taller than me? And God has put you in the right place at the right time, raising the right kids. It's no mistake. When you're kissing boo-boos and you're crying with them and you're hugging them and you're teaching them, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing as a mom to teach them life skills. I know when I was growing up, my mom was like, I need to teach you some independence. I need to teach you some things. I need to teach you how to cook so you don't starve when you get out of this house. I need to teach you how to do laundry and iron and sew. I can sew a button, folks. My button falls off, I'm in good shape. Because of my mom. She taught me. She taught me how the smoke alarm does go off if you burn stuff. She taught me those things. Thank God for moms. They teach you life skills. It's a beautiful thing when there's chaos going on and struggles and hardships late nights and early mornings. You wear many hats. A lot of times you're, just, you're at your end, right? You feel like, man, I'm like a, an Uber driver. I'm taking my kids here, taking my kids there. I got a daughter that goes to dance class. I got a son that's that's running the ball the ball field. I'm going here. I got to go shopping. I got to do this while I'm working, while I'm taking care of my husband, while I'm doing this, while I'm doing that. Everybody's pulling on you. The struggles are real. You're cooking. You're cleaning. Doing laundry. But it's a beautiful thing. 
God is pleased with your efforts even when you feel like you have failed and you're in despair. God says, you know what? I see you. I see your efforts. I see you. I see that you strive to be that Proverbs 31 woman. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep reaching. Keep bending. Keep adapting because that's what I've called you to do is to be a mom. If you would stand with me. At the end of your earthly ministry, your seeds are going to be scattered. All the influences that you have taught kids, maybe, maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're a teacher and you say, you know what? I don't have kids of my own, but I've got 30 in my class. And every day you walk in and every day you impart in them. Every day you, you listen to them. Every day you love on them. You're an influence in their life. Keep reaching for heaven. Keep being a wildflower that God has called you to be. First Peter, verse, uh, verse, First Peter, chapter three, verse three and four says, "Your beauty should not come from with outward uh, adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and wearing gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be from the inner self, the unfading beauty." of a gentle and quiet spirit which is a great worth in God's sight God is pleased with you as moms God wants you to know that wherever you feel like you failed he doesn't see that all the pressures of the world that you have to be this to be a mom let me tell you something if you're putting your value in God's word as a mom, then you've won. What you are doing is not in vain. It's seen every day by your Heavenly Father. And you see, well, I've raised my kids and they didn't turn out the way I thought they were going to. You haven't failed. Those truths and those values and those things that you've imparted into your kids, guess what? They're still there. It, isn't, it doesn't go void. Your Heavenly Father seen what you did, sees how you act now towards your kids. You love on your kids. The Bible tells us what? You train them up. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. They know the truth. Keep imparting that truth into your kids. The wildflower in many ways contribute to the protect the cycle of life. You moms and grandmoms and moms-to-be and women of influence, you don't have an easy task. And for that, I want to say thank you and happy Mother's Day. That your lives will be filled with fragrance of God. That your lives will be what God wants them to be. And that you are like a wildflower. You're like that lily of the valley. When people see you, they see God. When they see you, they see Jesus. And if you're here today and you're watching online, you say, you know what? I don't know this Jesus. I feel like I have been bending and feel like I'm ready to snap and I feel like I can't adapt and I feel like I'm not beautiful. God says, my child, yes, you are. I'm going to give you an opportunity to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All you have to do is close your eyes, bow your heads, Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for my sins. But on the third day, he rose from that grave and is alive today. Lord, I ask you into my heart, ask you into my life. And I will live all the days of my life for you. And in Christ's name we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen.
Now, if you're here today or you're watching online, you say, you know what? I said that prayer for the very first time. Well, heaven is celebrating and so are we. If you would, contact, contact us at the email below. and Let us know that you made that decision. We have some great resources we want to place in your hands. Take this journey with you. And as we depart today, I want every mom to know, every woman to know, that God is pleased with you. He sees how beautiful you are. He created you. And he knows that you have a huge responsibility, whether you have a toddler running around your house or whether you have an adult. That responsibility that he has given to you is precious. And God says thank you. Thank you to all the moms. Because all the moms, you're like a wildflower. Amen? Amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise today?